sequences. Now the shotgun sequencing are divided into two different parts. One is the hierarchical shotgun sequencing, another one is the whole genome shotgun sequencing. Now the hierarchical shotgun sequencing is the generation of an overlapping set of intermediate size. That means uh, it's like 200 KB insert clones and then you utilize those clones to further study and sequence and further divide them and finally sequence them. On the other hand, whole genome shotgun approach is totally different kind. It's a generation of sequence reads directly from a whole genome genome library. For sequencing this whole genome, we require the whole genome library that are constructed. So for constructing the whole genome sequencing, we must have constructed first the whole genomic library of that organism. Otherwise, we cannot sequence the genome. So we'll take the gene from the whole genome library and that we, then we were to do, we need to cleave them using uh, the restriction enzymes into smaller fragments, then we'll use them. Now this is used for Drosophila and all, uh, by the cellular genomics in 1998 and for the human genome sequencing. Now here is a process of hierarchical short girl sequencing. The sequencing is relies on simple steps. First is the source clone. So what we need to do, this is a source, it's a 40 KB insert. So just take this source, the whole source and clone it into small, uh, small into uh, different vectors. And the vectors we utilize is uh, either back or yak. That means bacterial artificial chromosome or yeast artificial chromosome. We cannot use plasmid and cosmids for that because the insert is too large, 40 kb, right? Now what we need to do, we need to uh, get this and then finally take these sequences and chop them up using restriction enzymes and mechanical sharing uh, can be also utilized for this kind of chromosomal sharing. And then what we get small fragments and we then subclone them into other vectors. Now subcloning uh, limit or insert is having 4 to 10 kb of insert. Then once we get this kind of small insert or small subclones, then what we need to do, we need to take the subclones and again break them down into smaller fragments. So we get this is a large subclone. We again break them into smaller fragments. Now once we get the smaller fragments of DNA, which is 1 to 2 KB in sequence insert, again clone them into any kind of plasmid vectors. And then we take those vectors and sequence them using different kinds of sequencing techniques, either Sanger sequencing or automated sequencing. Now once we get the sequencing, we try to overlap all those sequences to find out the history of from where it is originated. Now we get the sequence from here, we get the sequence from this fragment, get the sequence from this fragment. Now what we need to do, we need to arrange all the sequences as uh, we get, we need to get this large part. Now this sequence is corresponding to this red colored region here. That's how we get the DNA sequence. So sequencing is not a big deal in these cases because sequencing, when we get the small segment of DNA, sequencing becomes easier. But uh, the tough or difficult part is to align them so that we get a large section of the DNA so that we get the sequencing of the whole chromosome. That's the mo most important point of all. So this is the process that are given here. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of this kind of uh, hierarchical uh, shotgun sequencing is that they are labor saving and it allows the sequencing of individual clone in different laboratories because uh, if we uh, break this part, break this original vector into small segments and we provide, uh, produce the libraries with it, then we can take uh, those libraries and send those libraries to different laboratories. Suppose we send this part into a different laboratory and make them to sequence this one. We se give this one to another laboratory to sequence it for, the, for that. So the, after all, every laboratory provides us the sequence results. Then what we need to do, we know from which segment the results are coming so we can trace back their ancestry and simply align them to get a large chromosomal sequence. So that is the advantage for this kind of hierarchical shotgun sequencing. That's why it's called a hierarchical because we are moving down a hierarchical tree, right? So that's a very important point on basic and uh, unique nature of this hierarchical se sequencing. And another thing is that uh, before the sequencing is done, we must know the map of this chromosome because we use some markers. For example, here we know this is part purple, this, uh, blue, this is one is uh, yellow, this is green, this is red. So you know all of these segments even before we started the sequencing. So this is another advantage. Now each stretch of the DNA only needs to be sequenced once. That's also an importance because only as fragments of the DNA if one only sequence, then we get the rest of the sequences. Another important uh, feature is that if we get some kind of mistake from one sequencing, suppose we got right sequence for all, but if any mistake or delay happened to one type of sequencing, it won't hamper the rest of the sequencing procedure because these fragment sequencing are independent of each other. So that's the important. That's the very very advantageous side of this kind of. Uh, 
hierarchical shotgun sequencing now what is the disadvantage it's a slow process because it it will take a longer time because as we need to carry out the sequencing of different segments it will take a longer time and again it will require man manipulation during uh, this kind of subcloning stages so it's